to straddle biology and neuroscience because I look at how their brains and behavior changes across season. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I've had a student in my lab when Margie was the coordinator for biology a couple of years ago. So she and I have worked together before. Um, but as I said, I do have many hats. So I have my uh, researcher hat. Mm -hmm. I've also um, been the undergraduate program coordinator in psychology and neuroscience. I did that job for about five, oh my gosh, five years. Um, so I did a lot of advising at the time. I also coordinated the uh, independent study program in that department. And I've also been the acting associate dean academic. So that oversees all of the um, academic programs in um, the faculty of science. And now, as Allison said, I'm the associate dean of undergraduate program continuity. So um, because of everything that happened during uh, starting in March with, with COVID, um, I was in the uh, associate dean academic position. So I was working on the transition and of, of what happened then. But then um, we needed more help. There's a lot going on in our faculty to support our faculty, our instructors, our students, and everybody. So I'm staying in a, an associate dean position to help with that. So, so I have lots of experience from many different levels about um, research, from supervising my own students to, to being a researcher, to um, you know knowing a little bit about different programs and how that runs at Dell. And one thing about Dell is that you know we have a lot of opportunities for undergraduates um, to do, to do research and participate in research. So it's a, it's a great place for that kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've, uh, we can do a couple things now. If people have um, questions that they'd like to ask you, then we can, um, we can do that. We have a comment here from uh, Sanjana saying, my favorite courses during my course of doing psychology was heavily neuroscience based. Honestly, very interesting. Um, oh, what, cor what course was it? <laughs> And maybe Sanjana wants to, to come on, on camera here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My camera's not working, but can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can totally yeah, hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of them were like mostly intro because I just did my undergrad in psychology. I didn't like pursue it further on because I wanted to do ocean sciences at Dal. But I did like third and fourth level neuroscience based courses where you would learn a lot about how different parts of the brain works and like how signaling works and like why we necessarily do things the way we do. And a very interesting part of one of my courses what I came upon was like, are we like born with the inherent need to maybe sometimes have evil thoughts? And it's actually like so surprising what you learn because you don't <laughs> expect that. And it's like kind of mind blowing, honestly, but I've like learned a lot of stuff in psychology that I thought could never be the case. And it's honestly like so interesting. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, I teach I teach a really research heavily based class, a lecture class on neurobiology of learning. So I I present a lot of current studies on on that in, in that course. OK, so I think what we should do is kind of talk about what opportunities there are. And this is going to be really tricky because, you know, in a non COVID situation, we have sort of one um, way of experience re experiencing research, but we have to kind of talk about it for this year in a little bit of a different way, right? Because we're not we're not in the same world that we were last year. So um, I think the first thing that we should do is kind of talk about in general what research opportunities there are, and then maybe we'll move to talking about how those might be different this year because of COVID. So. Um, so the first thing is um, there's sort of three, maybe three different ways that you can get research experience in um, the Faculty of Science. So the first one is volunteering, and that is generally open to any student at any year, as long as you can find a position in a lab. So I think one of the biggest barriers for students in um, finding a research position is being nervous about approaching a professor. And um, every time I talk to students about doing research, one of the biggest things about um, finding these positions is that a lot of it is up to you. So sometimes we have lists or we know who's taking students. So in my department, I kind of sometimes know 
who does what research, who takes students, and who might have a position in their lab. But really, it's up to you to go out and find these opportunities. And that says a lot about you to the researcher themselves. If you are an independent student, if you are going out there and showing enthusiasm and saying, look, I have these skills, I'm willing to come in and volunteer, be honest about how much time you can give to the researcher. So, you know, you don't want to say, you, you know, you don't want to say I want to volunteer and then the and then and then you maybe only have two hours a week. Two hours a week is still helpful, but we need to know that, right? Because it might depend on what kind of work we give to you. So volunteering is one opportunity. Another opportunity for research, and generally all of our programs have this, is coursework. So you can do an independent study course. So I'm not talking about lab courses where you learn how to pipette or you look at, at um, maybe pre-collected data. I'm talking about an independent study course where you work in a professor's lab um, to gain experience and you get course credit for that. So we have an independent study uh, course opportunity. Some of them are for two semesters and some of them are for one semester. And then we also have honors. So an honors degree is sort of a, a, a program where your degree um, is you are required to do research as part of your degree. And that's done typically in your fourth year. Some students um, finish their degree and come back and do what we call an honors conversion. So they convert their degree from an honors, from a, a major to an honors by doing the honors portion in their fifth year. Um, so that's the second coursework. And then the third uh, one is paid position. So sometimes you could be lucky enough to be hired as a research assistant. Usually this happens after you've volunteered for a researcher and they get to know you, or you've done a course with them. Um, or you can look at applying for a summer research award and you can get paid for 16 weeks of work in someone's lab. So those are three general ways um, to gain research experience um, in, uh, at Dell uh, in the Faculty of Science. So maybe I'll just first ask if anyone has questions about those specific um, those specific uh, choices, and then we can catch up on maybe some of the questions uh, in the chat, Ali. Is that, does that sound yeah, good? That okay. sounds great. Okay. So if you're comfortable and you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand. Everyone sees the little hand sign there. You can raise your hand, and then we can call on you. And if you feel comfortable, I'd love to see your face. If you want to turn on your camera and ask a question, that would be super. If you just want to turn on your voice, that's fine too. Um, okay, so Sanjana. Yeah, so my question is like, um, do we have to be in like a specific major to be able to uh, be participating in these research studies or like are our research studies uh, in a way where we can only reach out to those who are specific to our majors? Um, Margie, do you want me to answer? Or do you Sorry, I was typing. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay, yeah, I'll answer. I'll answer. So, so what I will say is that for courses and for honors, mm -hmm. um, that yes, you have to be part of a certain program. So usually those are restricted to majors, um, so an independent study course. But you don't have to say be a neuroscience major to volunteer in a neuroscience lab. So. I would consider myself a neuroscience lab. I've had biology students for sure volunteer in my lab easily um, and even do their biology courses, but with me. So the answer really is is no to that one. Okay, perfect. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Maybe we want to start going through some of the questions in the chat and yeah, let's do that. going to uh, go to Elisa's question first. And Elisa, okay. if you'd like to come on, on camera or you don't have to come on camera, just maybe your voice or, or not, um, hi. Ask your oh, hi. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Shoot, go for it. <laughs> um, I was just wondering. I looked at all the like the research stuff that was available, like on the website and stuff throughout the year, on like Dell website or like Indeed or something, and Dell Career, and they all require like a degree or like like a third year or a fourth year. You know, so I was just wondering how to get started in second year and how to find the resources, the course stuff. Okay. And how do you like know a professor is doing like a project? Okay. 
That's a lot of questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So I think one answer will will kind of get to a couple of your questions, which is um, how do you find research projects, and how do you know who's taking research students? You have to ask. So this is where you have to um, compose a professional email. You have to do a bit of research and, and kind of look at what professors are doing. So going to the website is a perfect thing for you to do. You thought that was a great first step. And kind of look at um, what different professors are doing. You might have one that teaches you a second year or first year course. So in uh, psych and neuroscience and in biology, several different professors teach first year. And you might get really excited about how one professor interacts with students and what their topic is. Um, and then you can go to their website, look at what they do, and then you send them an email and you say, dear professor whatever, dear professor Fillmore, um, or dear Dr. Fillmore, uh, I am really excited to get research opportunities. Here is my academic transcript. So if you have a great academic transcript, that can help you. But I will tell you that just because you have a straight A transcript doesn't mean you're the best in the lab. Like I've had students who are who are worried about volunteering because maybe their grades aren't as great. But some students, even if their grades aren't super high, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't be great in the lab. Like so we look for the we train you and and we look for things that are like reliability. Do you show up when you say you're going to show up? Are you consistent? Do you take feedback? Do you let me know when you don't understand something instead of saying, yeah, I get it, and then not really get it, right? Mm -hmm. So all of those things are characteristics that any student can have. But the biggest thing is you have to do the work to approach a professor and find out if they're taking students and what the opportunity is. And I know that can be really hard. I know that can be really intimidating. I mean, sometimes you just see us on a camera or at the front of a classroom and you're like, oh my God, how, how could little me go up to someone and, and, um, and how do I know they're not, they're not gonna say no? They could say no, but you won't know until you try. And that's the thing about research and an independent study. Independent is in there for a reason, right? So the first sign that you're ready to do independent research is that you can independently approach professors. And actually, can I just jump in? Uh, yeah, for sure. The, one of the tips that I always tell, you know, prospective honors students who kind of come talking to me asking about how do I find a professor and how do I contact them? Um, it's I don't mean it to be tricky, but I always tell them, you know, you go and you do the research to figure out whose work you're interested in. And then when you contact that person, I think so, you know, often different professors will have maybe multiple projects on the go in their lab. You know, they're studying this and they're studying that. And if you've read enough about what they do that you know that, if you say I'm really interested in this particular part of your research program, right? Like I, I really love, I don't know, if you, let's say if you work on finches and robins, if I don't know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but if, if you say finches, starlings, yeah. Okay, or, or you know, like if you have a couple of different research questions in your research program, I find if a student sort of targets in on one of those questions to say, you know, I'm really interested in what you're doing around X kind yeah. of thing, even if you don't, you know, even if the professor doesn't have a project on that piece of their research, it makes you sound much more informed as a potential student, like it really shows that you've gone to the effort to read a couple of their papers and really get a sense of what it is they do, as opposed to I'm in your class and I really like the way you talk, right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so it, it, it just a fun. It's something it's a way to sort of set yourself apart to show that you have done the legwork. It's not just I liked your class and I know you do research and can I work with you? Right. So in in that email, as being as specific as you can about what it is about their research that that you like, I think is a good idea. And then, yeah, as, as Leslie was saying, just being as specific as you can about, you know, why the professor might want to work with you, what and, and thinking broadly, like if you have skills outside of academia as well, and, and particularly in biology and marine biology, if if it's a field type research, right? Like if you have first aid 
training, if you are a lifeguard, if you, you know, ha I mean, I can remember when I was looking into graduate school on uh, how Whitehead's um, site, basically, if you had small boat maintenance skills, <laughs> he, he was interested in you, right? So you can think across different aspects of your life um, of, of things that you might be able to bring to, to the group. So amazing. I think that I think that response from Leslie and Margie just covered quite a few of the questions that came up in the chat. So I think from Liam, Bosma, and maybe Amelia um, about how to how to find out what what research is going on and contact um, contact researchers. Um, I know there are a couple people with hands up, um, and I think Valeria, did you want to? pop on your camera and, and ask a question and then we'll go back to the chat with with some of the questions there. Hey. <laughs> Hi. My Wi-Fi connection is kind of bad here, so hopefully it's not <laughs> no too laggy. Worries. No, all good. Oh, hi, all good. nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you too. So I'm just wondering, as a transfer student, um, when I'm applying for research, I don't have much on my Dow transcript yet. Right. Right. So, and like usually by third year, professors kind of know you, you've been in their classes and everything, but I didn't really get that FaceTime with professors yet, especially like with COVID um, kind of shortening the academic year. So I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if you have any suggestions for like specifically transfer students. Yeah, that's a great question. So if you aren't a transfer student, all your courses appear as they are, and we know if you've been in our class or not, but with a transfer student, um, we might have a course code and what it equ equates to, but um, we might not know exactly what you did in that course. So um, that's another place where email is really important, right? So if you can describe, I took this course and in this course, these are the things that we did. So if it was a lab course, say we did pipetting skills or we learned about research design or I worked a lot with Excel spreadsheets and I'm really good at organizing data and, and graphing it. Being able to, to kind of highlight those skills that you got out of a course is really important to, to knowing what kind of experience you have. So this is the first step, like on your scale from being a student to a scientist. Scientists have to talk about themselves and sell themselves all the time. And I know it's, it, you know, that might be a little unexpected, but we're always saying, okay, I can do this skill. I, can, I have this capability because that's what builds relationships among researchers. So this is a really good way to start building those skills now as a, as a young scientist. So I would definitely explain in your email that you are a transfer student, any experience that you have. And if you have worked with a professor at a different university, you could always ask them to send a little note to the professor you're interested in working with and say, yeah, surely I've, 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 yeah I've worked with this student. They, they're reliable, they're coming. That kind of stuff would be, for me as a researcher looking for volunteers, that would be a really um, great thing to say, oh, look, the student really does. Look, at, they've gone that extra mile. They really do want to work in the lab. They have that enthusiasm. And uh, and that would that would say a lot for sure. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great. Yeah, and I would actually say that uh, even if you're not a transfer student, like what Leslie was saying there about being able to sort of recognize and verbalize what it is you took away from a particular class that would be applicable somewhere else. Like even if the professors in the department recognize, you know, biology 2030, that's our genetics class, right? But to be able to show that you as an individual also recognize, you know, it wasn't just I took this class, so I did the stuff that was in this class, right? To be able to show that I know what I got out of this class, right? So even if you're not a transfer student, that that could be something good to put in your, your email as well, right? Like in genetics, we did these things and it would be useful in, in, for me to know that in, in the lab that I'm asking to, to work in. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. And I actually had like a follow up question um, with the new COVID restrictions. Are a lot of professors coming back to their labs or will there be a few that are <laughs> not like, is it just a matter of emailing everyone or are people going to let you know if they're coming back to labs? Um, that's a really good question. Um, how am I going to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so maybe um, I, 
Emma, I'm going to get to your question about independent study and honors, but I really think there's a everyone's a worried about COVID. So maybe we'll talk to a bit about COVID and how that's affected labs. What and do you think? There is a question up there um, from I'm just trying to scroll up here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of great questions yeah. um, about how labs has have changed from last yeah. year to this year. So I think that yeah. would that would address that. And then I'd okay. also like to question uh, answer a question from uh, the very beginning about uh, how to get involved in research as a first year student. So yes, um, and don't worry, we're see we see everyone's. We'll yeah. we'll get to as many as we can. But uh, COVID, um, independent study, first year, and then we'll get to some of those honors questions. Okay, great, <laughs> great. So thanks, Valeria. That's a, that was those were great questions. Okay, so COVID, COVID. So <laughs> let me explain a, a bit about what happened when uh, we had to shut down um, Dalhousie in March. And then you'll kind of see how things are working since then. So uh, everyone had to shut down and then we had to impose quite a few restrictions on how many, how many people are allowed on campus. So that's sort of like the biggest thing that's going on right now. And the reason we can't allow um, everyone back on campus is because we have to worry about cleaning, right? And physical distancing. So physical space is one thing we have to worry about and cleaning is another thing we have to worry about. So, however, research is a huge priority for return to campus. And in the Faculty of Science, many, many people have research programs going. So, um, right away, we still had labs that were allowed to be open because they were conducting critical research. So we had, we actually have some COVID labs here at Dalhousie. Um, so they were continuing research, but some people with ongoing studies that couldn't be stopped were also allowed to keep going. So um, that was sort of the first stage. Then we gradually brought other labs back, um, but we had to be really careful about um, physical distancing Every professor had to have a plan for opening their lab. They had to say who was coming into their lab to do the work, why it was critical for this work to happen. And then we had to make sure that there was cleaning done in between different people. And we also had to be really careful about um, sort of groups of labs, because sometimes we have shared space, that there wasn't too much overlap between that space. So is research going on at Dalhousie? Yes. Is it going on to the same degree as it was before? No. So why, besides the reasons about physical distance and cleaning, um, there's a couple other things. So anyone who's doing work on human research, that sort of was affected differently from what you might think of as traditional lab research. So doing research with humans has been slower to start up because obviously COVID and, and, and transfer between subject and researcher is going to be a little bit more tricky to, to sort out. So um, what I will say is that research is gradually returning and we're doing it very carefully, keeping in mind that things could change immediately to, because we really the ultimate decision is not up to Dalhousie it's up to the health authority right so we have to listen to what they say um, but what we're trying to do is give everyone we can access um, to the lab to the research so over the summer um, mostly graduate students and postdocs had access but starting in September, we're going to start incorporating honor students uh, into the lab. So some honor students will be able to do some research in their labs, but some won't. And really, we have to think cooperatively about this. We have to say, not everyone can return to campus, but you, it, that doesn't mean you won't have a project. So I think the next thing maybe I want to talk about is how our researchers have changed um, research projects so that everyone can get an experience of research. It might not be what they had planned. It might not be the research you thought you might have done, but it's an, um, actually an amazing opportunity. So, Margie, did you want to add anything before I go on and tell my amazing no, story about okay. the summer? Yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Thanks. So, 
So I mentioned a little while ago that we have summer research awards. So students can apply and then there we have about eight, we had about 85 students who got research positions this summer where they're paid to they they get paid, they get a, an award and they they work in a lab over the summer. But when COVID came and we had to shut things down, um, one of my responsibilities, I, I kind of realized, oh, no, what are we going to do with these students who thought they were going to have a summer job doing research? So I went to all the professors who were supervising these students and I said, OK, everybody, what can you do? How can you come up with a different project for a student so that they can still have a summer job, still get some research experience? And I'm going to tell you right now, I was so proud of our faculty and the students because everyone was a little bit flexible. Everyone was a little bit creative and every single student got a project. And the other thing it did was it made professors think outside the box and it made them think, OK, what other kinds of um, research, what other pieces of a research project could I have a student work on? Because a lot of times when maybe you guys come to the lab, you think, OK, I'm going to work on the front end of a project. I'm going to be the one maybe sectioning tissue or I'm going to be looking in a microscope and collecting images or I'm going to be collecting data from a human subject. But that's only one part of a really big research project, right? Because there's a lot of things that I do in my research that's at my desk. So I have videos that need to be analyzed. I have images of brain sections that are already collected that need to be where the cells need to be counted. I have data that needs to be compiled. I have papers that need to be written, so I need literature reviews done. I need, um, I need modeling done. Other labs did modeling. So we had all kinds of projects that professors may not have thought of before to give students, but are incredibly important pieces to delivering that final product of a published paper. So what it means for this year is that you might be doing an honors project, you might be doing an independent research project, you might be volunteering your time, and um, but it might be that you're going to get to do different things that you wouldn't normally get to do. So you might be exposed to things like modeling data. You might um, have videos that you're going to analyze. So I have one study where um, we actually got videos of birds um, storing seeds in ice cube trays. So they have ice cube trays filled with sand and they're given seeds and they put the seeds in them. And then we look at where they put them and where they take them out and whether they put them back in a different hole. These birds are a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> but there are so many things that we need out of this data. And, and if I have a student who wants to volunteer and look at this data, this is, this is super important that it's a project that maybe I would have put to the side um, but now is coming to the forefront because I actually have students who might want to work on it. So uh, I know it might not be the same experience you're thinking of, but it doesn't mean that the skills you're going to get out of it aren't going to be equally as important or valid or applicable in the future um, by doing these types of projects. Awesome. Margie, did you want to add anything? Yeah, and I mean, similar situation in biology and, and marine biology, right? Like so much data gets generated on with these front end studies. And particularly if, if again, if it's sort of a field project, you have a very short opportunity to go out into the field. And so you just go out and get as much as you possibly can. And so people can have, you know, like so much data that it would take years to analyze. Um, and you know, now now those are the kinds of projects. And so so in our department for the honor students for this coming year, there was a lot of creativity there, but um, like all, virtually all of the professors were able to switch over to projects that could be done remotely because they have all of this data to, to analyze. Um, and again, sort of speaking to it might not be what you think of when you're sort of thinking, I want to get some research experience, but those sorts of data analysis skills are probably even more useful to get right like tromping through the forest might be fun right <laughs> but wrangling excel sheets and learning statistics and learning how to analyze data and and organize data and that sort of thing like that's transferable to anything that um well you know 
I would say more transferable to, to different projects for the future. So super valuable um, skills. So amazing. Thank you both so much for those extremely detailed <laughs> <laughs> answers. Um, and maybe uh, maybe before you know, we, we will answer the question about the first year, Amelia. I haven't forgotten that, but um, maybe we'll kind of switch gears a little bit to some of the the nuts and bolts with honors and how that's that's going to work this year. And, and I, maybe we'll start with Emma's question. Emma, did you want to come on on camera and ask your question to Leslie and Margie? No pressure, but you're welcome to. Hi. Okay. Good. Hey, Hi. Emma. Hi. How are you guys? <laughs> Good. Great. How are you? Good. So I'm uh, going into my second year in neuroscience and I've, I did DISP last year, so I was really fortunate to actually like do a research project with Amazing. Um, PhD students and honor students and stuff like that. So it was like really great. Hmm. Obviously, like I did that in the second term, so I got cut short. So we weren't <laughs> able to completely finish it, but it was still a great experience. But I am looking to do an honors and I plan on doing that. But I know there's the, also the option of third year independent research. And I was just curious, like, do people usually do one or the other? Does it make sense to do the third year and then do honors? Um, just kind of what that all entails. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so there's a couple of different reasons why someone does an independent study project. So first of all, yes, sometimes it's a great idea to do one before you do honors. And what that does is it tells you, first of all, is research for you? Because you might have an idea that you're, you know, you're in a lab, white lab coats are so cool, obviously, and wearing <laughs> gloves and masks and, 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 you know, and, and goggles. That's obviously a look you want to put on your Insta. But <laughs> it can be really repetitive. And some students get into a lab and they're like, oh, my God, I, this is totally not for me. Um, or they might say, OK. Some about some things about this are cool, but um, this area of research is not for me. And so what an independent study course does if you're doing it before your honors kind of tells you, is it for you? And is this research right for you? Is this supervisor right for you? Because the biggest thing about um, an independent study course is that, you know, your supervisor is your instructor. So having a good relationship with them, being able to ask what your expect, what the expectations are, being able to navigate tricky situations, like it, mess ups happen, students make mistakes, you guys are just learning, right? So how are you going to present that to a professor? So that's, um, you know, what getting comfortable with that, knowing if that person's the right and right person match for you, really important. Um, so a lot of people do independent study before they do honors. From a student perspective, that's what it gives you. It also lets you know, lets the the supervisor know whether you are a good match for their lab, right? So like, did it go well? Um, have we trained you with some skills that we want to carry on with the project? That happens quite a bit, but it's not totally necessary. So some students do honors without doing an independent study for sure. That's, I mean, and that happens quite a bit, actually. And if it's in a different lab, you're, you know, you might be starting with different skills anyway. So the other way to think about it is that, you know, honors is a, is a program and it is really for top students. So a lot of times there are GPA requirements, right? And you have to have a minimum requirement to get into honors. And some students are maybe close, but not quite there, or they just don't have the right prerequisites or they don't have minimum grades. Sometimes with independent study courses, and a, like neuro is an example, the grades you need to do an independent study are not as high as what you need to do honors. So if you don't, if you aren't quite a match for the honors program, it, you can do an independent study project. You can get that experience without having to do honors. So that's another way to think about those two opportunities. Margie, is that kind of how it works in biology too? Um. I'd say it's a little bit different in biology. So the impression that I'm getting from this conversation is that your independent research courses are at the third year level. They are, but we have fourth year students in fourth year can do them as well. OK, yeah. In in biology, our independent research courses are fourth year classes and they're sort of they are kind of intended for fourth year students. And I'd say the the way it works most in our department is as Leslie was saying, like 
if you're if you either don't want to or you don't have the opportunity to do honors the independent research is sort of used more by our majors students to to get some research experience that they can then speak to on their their um, CB when they once they've graduated so I would say in biology and marine biology it's quite unusual for an honors student to also do independent research um, courses but uh, not unheard of at all and um, I think I saw somewhere back in, in the chat, uh, there was a question about how many independent research courses can you do? Like, do you just do one or multiple? I think I saw that somewhere. Oh, I'm not sure right. Who was that depends that. on the program too. Yeah. In, in our, in our pro, in neuroscience, you're only allowed, you can only do one. So you can't, do, there, we have a full year one and a half year one, like a two term or one term. You can't do both. Okay. Um, and, but you can yeah. do an independent study and then an honors. And then honors. Okay, yeah. So yeah. ours ours are structured a bit differently. We have our, our independent research classes are only one term, um, but you can typically so and they we have a few different codes. So students, I think the most anyone's ever done is four of them. Um, but so typically um, one or two is how many um, students in our department do. But we did have we did have one student that we had to dig up an old course code because they'd already done the first three. So we had to pull out another one so they could do a fourth um, uh, research project. But but again, it's sort of uh, those classes are being used by uh, the majors to get research experience more so than than the honors. But I just had a follow up question. Um, yeah. How, like I know probably like obviously I'd need to organize that this year if I want to do a third year next year. How far in advance do you need to have these things kind of set up, ready to go? When do you start, a, like should I be approaching them now at the beginning of the year? Is that something you look at more in the fall term or uh, the winter term? Like how far in advance usually do people get it all lined up? Uh, I always think the sooner the better. Um, some labs, I mean, labs have limited spaces, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I only have so many spots. I usually don't take more than a total of three um, undergraduate students. So whether they're independent study honors or whatever, because I want to make sure that they're supported. Mm -hmm. And also I kind of make sure if their project doesn't work out that I have a backup project for them, <laughs> right? <laughs> so some labs take quite a few. I've had we've had a couple of labs last year that had four honor students. So okay. it really depends on, um, on the individual lab, but if there, it was, and some labs are really, really popular. Like I find in, in psych and neuro, the, the labs that study addiction, the spots fill up really quick mm -hmm. because it's a really, you know, like it's a really popular area of study. Right. Um, so if there's some place you really, really want to work with, then the sooner the better. And that's where you could offer to volunteer and say, look, I have, I want to do honors. Can I start volunteering now so you get to know me? Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, great question. Fantastic. Thanks for coming on camera. <laughs> um, we do have a hand up, but I just did want to draw attention. So um, both Leslie and Margie have been responding to some of the questions that are being asked right in the chat. Um, so, uh, Jess, the question about um, if, if uh, supervisors are going to be flexible. Um, yes, absolutely. I think uh, to Leslie's point earlier, they have really um, gone above and beyond to show how, how supportive and flexible that they can be this year. They really um, have, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're, I'm extremely proud of our faculty for how everyone is, is working so hard this summer. Um, and then Sinjana, I think uh, Leslie answered your question as well, but um, we do have a hand up here from Mustan Sierra. Did, did you want to come on camera and ask your question? Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you all doing? Great, Good. Good. thank you. Away. Uh, thank you so much, first off, for this uh, like a session and hosting it and giving us the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, thank you so much. No problem. Um, so I'm going into my first year at Dell. And I'm in the DISC program currently as well. Amazing. Uh, and I was just wondering, like, if I was interested maybe after my first year in applying for, like, a summer research, like a grant almost, I guess it's, uh, like, what you've been describing it as. Um, how and, like, by when exactly would I have to apply for that? Great question. 
Um, okay, so first I have to tell you a little bit, something a little bit sad, and that is the um, awards for fac in the Faculty of Science are for students going into their third, fourth, and after fourth year. So after first year, students aren't um, eligible. Um, and that's partly because we, um, a lot of the awards are based on GPA and number of credits, and you have to have a certain number of credits before you're, you're able to apply. So that's kind of the sad bit, um, <laughs> no <worries>. but, <laughs> but the good, the good bit is that, that first of all, you can hold two in your career as an, as an undergraduate researcher. Um, Two, we do prioritize third year and second year so that there's lots, we sort of um, weight the number of awards mostly towards third and second year when maybe um, there are fewer opportunities for students to, to have summer research jobs. So we kind of create more opportunities for them. Um, and we do a lot of advertising about when the applications are due. Usually it's, um, I think it's January, and then we um, do the assessment as soon as we can after that and let you know so that you know if you have an award or not. And also, sometimes we have a wait list, so some students apply and then are unable to take the award, and then we let, because we want you to know if you have a job for the summer here in Halifax, and then um, and then you can look for something else if you aren't successful, um, mm -hmm. or you can plan for your summer to be here if, if you are. So, um we do try and advertise a lot more. Last year, I put up posters so that students could um, could know better about the opportunity. And we had a QR code, you know, like so you could scan and, and figure out where the application is. But departments also should let you know because in each you apply within each department and then it comes yeah. up to the faculty. Yeah. Awesome. Really uh, good question. Thank you. Uh, is it okay to ask a few more right now? I have a couple. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Um, now, I guess, uh, I guess in lines with, um, as you, like I asked just about deadlines for like a summer opportunity, um, if I'm just looking for like a volunteer opportunity with a professor, um, is there a, a point to where I should target like, okay, I, I should let this professor know that I'm interested in doing research for them, like maybe at the start of a term, or can I still let them know even like halfway uh, during the term and then they can still let me into their lab? Anytime is fine. Margie, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, I would, I would say the same. Uh, again, so before when Leslie was saying kind of as early as possible is always good. And, and um, I guess just in light of the COVID restrictions, um, it, it might, even if they're interested in having you work with them, it might take them a little bit longer now. I'm, I'm just sort of imagining, but uh, if there's some more hoops that they need to go through in order to get you um, either in the lab or come up with um, activities for for you to do. So, um, you know, there might be a bit of a longer turnaround time. Um, and actually, I was just going to add to your question about uh, summer opportunities and, and research funds. Uh, I know in the biology department, we have um, departmental awards. Um, like, for mm -hmm. example, we have the Sarah Lawson Award for students who are doing research on plants. And so depending on what department you're in, you would also potentially want to sort of look around on the departmental websites to see what um, research award opportunities there, there are in addition to the, the NSERC um, undergraduate research awards. Um, okay. And those, I know that the, uh, for example, the Sarah Lawson deadline is later than the NSERC deadline. So the, the, and there would be information about those deadlines and that sort of thing on the departmental websites as well. Awesome. Uh, and my last question is that I know I'm hearing a lot and I just I'm not sure if this was mentioned, but I just want to maybe clear it up for myself is that um, do we have to be completing an honors to go into research? Oh, you mean like graduate school? Um, no, no. So as in like, do we have to be completing an honors degree in our undergraduate uh, to do research? To have in opportunities in undergraduate. Yes. No, definitely okay. not. Yeah. Volunteer courses that aren't honors related or, you know, maybe even look into a, a research position that's paid. But no, definitely not. Dev doesn't have to be honors. Awesome. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
And maybe this would be a good opportunity, actually, with Musinsir being a first-year student, about some of the the opportunities for first-year students to get involved in research. Um, I, we, I know we have our, our integrated science program, but are there any other ways for first-year students to um, to get involved in research? Margie, do you want to talk about biology? I suspect it's kind of the same across everyone. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say probably volunteering is is really the other um, key way for you know in the first year at least yep. um, to to get your foot in the door of a lab right all, all of the research based courses and, and that sort of thing are for upper year students so if you're really keen and you're wanting to get involved uh, in a lab in first year it's it's probably going to have to be volunteer awesome. yeah I agree okay. for I mean the, usually for independent research courses, you need prerequisites and a certain number of credit hours and maybe even some minimum grades in the area you're studying. So volunteering for first years is totally the way to go. Um, and, and it's going to give you the most opportunity. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Like you might be worried. Oh, uh, first years. First year is a big deal, right? Like that's the other thing is we're protecting you a little bit. First year is a lot of work. You're getting used to a new environment. You're getting used to new expectations. And we expect we expect a lot from you guys, right? Like we, so um, it, it's okay. I mean, the other thing is it's awesome that you want to get involved, but it's okay to do maybe a little bit and wait for um, the opportunity for second year. The other thing you may want to consider is um, the Faculty of Science offers what we call first year interest groups or FIGs. And that is actually a really good way to kind of meet other students, but also they have um, researchers come and talk to individual um, FIGs groups. And um, that way you get in contact with professors and you can ask them one on one questions and then you get to know what they do and they get to meet you. So I would say FIGS is another really good way to sort of start your research journey just by um, ex getting exposure to the different research um, that's out there. Awesome. Um, and I'm just going to put a link in the chat right now um, for FIGS. And I put a, a couple links up in the chat above about um, the undergrad research opportunities and specifically the summer research opportunities. So. Um, once again, I've seen, uh, I think Leslie's been responding to a lot of questions here, have, yeah. which is great. Um, there was a question up here from Sari, I believe. Um, Sari, did you want to come on and ask your question or I'm, I can ask it for you? I'll just give you a second here to see if you want to come on your camera. No pressure. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I saw your question. I was Hello. thinking about answering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hey, how are good. you? I'm fine. Thanks. What about you? Good. I'm good. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weekend here in uh, UAE. It's also like vacation. Yay. <laughs> awesome. So basically, I'm trying to take like a lot of credits in, in, the, in the fall and in the winter. So I'm not going to have any time for research. So is there any chances like I did the, the research requirements in the summer? That's a fantastic question. Um, a lot of departments do run their independent study courses in the summer. So honors projects ha definitely run in the fall and winter semesters, but independent study courses ru can run in the summer. So absolutely, you can complete uh, an independent study course and get credit in a summer term for sure you can do that thank yeah. you yeah you're welcome you um and just uh so we do have another hand up here um okay. i think let me just see sanjana i think did you yeah you had your hand up and then we'll go back to the chat yeah okay. so i know there are some like networks and organizations that are partnered with dow like for example the ocean tracking network which is has its headquarters based at dow so do you encourage us to maybe even reach out to such organizations for research opportunities um it really depends so um, a lot of our researchers are associated with the Ocean Tracking Network already. 
Sometimes um, for an honors research, research or independent study research, you have to have a, an internal supervisor to the department to make sure that, first of all, the project you're doing sort of meets the standards. And when I say that, I don't mean necessarily that the project is not good enough. Sometimes the projects are too vague and unmanageable. So right. someone who's not used to working in an academic environment, you have to make sure that they're not, you know, asking the student to do way more than 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 they should be doing for a project. So there sometimes needs to be an internal supervisor to that. Margie, would do you have kind of those sort of policies in biology? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it can depend a little bit. We, I mean, we have quite a number of researchers from outside, uh, for example, over at the Bedford Institute of Oceanography or, um, you know, maybe the Ocean Tracking Network that have supervised honor students for a number of years. And so, you know, we're comfortable with them that they, uh, you know, can create a package, a project that's packaged properly for an honor student or an independent research um, class. And so for those people, we don't continue to require an internal supervisor, but but definitely if it's somebody who, you know, is sort of new to supervising students in our department, we um, we require that there's an internal supervisor to just sort of help create the project and just sort of oversee it. And then, you know, if something uh, goes wrong, you know, I, I, I mean, if it's a researcher who works for the government and they change positions and move across the country, then the student still has somebody um, within the department to to sort of have their back kind of thing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Haha, <laughs> everyone's answering uh, my in the, oh, in the really? chat there. <laughs> it's, it's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Ali, you're you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to create a poll and do two things at once. And here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm discovering um, I'm not good at answering questions in chat and listening at the same time. So it's easy tough. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's, tough. Talking, it's one of those great, great transferable skills. Yes. I need to, I need to be like a dolphin. Don't dolphins sleep on one side of their brain yes. at, at, at a time so that you know one piece of the brain can can work on a chat and the other can answer questions. Yeah, <laughs> We're exactly. pretty close to our time. Is it? Uh, Allison, is there any sort of major question you think we've missed? I don't. The the did you respond to Valeria's question here for third year neuro? I was supposed to take at least two lab courses. I moved all my labs to the winter semester. Oh. Uh, in hopes there might be a return to campus. If there's something that might happen with smaller labs, and then I think that would probably be our last question, and we'll yeah. wrap it there. Yeah. So. I know it's really frustrating not knowing what's going to happen for sure in the winter. And even if we say maybe there's a possibility that smaller labs might have a little piece of hands on experience, we can't guarantee it, right? Because we could plan for that and then we could get a second wave and then have to start all over again with a shutdown. So I think what I can say is that um, if there's any chance of giving you a little piece of experiential learning on campus, we will try to do that. But we're also really aware that some students might not be here. And we don't want students to feel like they have to move to Halifax just for that teeny tiny chance of maybe being able to do um, a hands-on experience. So I know uncertainty really sucks. <laughs> It's, it's not just you guys that are feeling it, the professors are feeling it too. And believe me, they want to give you hands-on experience if they can, but they also don't want to have to plan, they don't want to plan for hands-on and then have to completely change and have the experience be not as good as they want. So in some cases, we're having to plan for online because we know that's going to be better than the situation of not being online and then having to pivot at the last minute. So it's a really ch tricky situation. I know if we can give you a little bit of hands-on experience, we can we will try, but I also don't want you to feel like you have to move to Halifax um, um, because you're going to miss out on something. A lot of a lot of departments I think ahead to 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 maybe increase opportunities when we know it's going to be um, a better and more predictable situation as well. It's just, I, I really wish I could answer you, 
Um, I just, I just can't. I just can't. I get, that's the best I can do. <laughs> I'm sad. I mean, I'm not students. I want to see that. Happy my notes. <laughs> I know. It's, I think the positive thing about it is that instructors and professors, you guys would not believe how hard they've been working all summer on on getting their their courses ready. We have been we've been providing funding for equipment for them for extra stuff. So I don't know if you've seen the Dial Science Hub. Uh, amazing things on virtual ex field ex courses and experiences. We've had someone going out with a drone to film <laughs> the earth so that you get a, as best a, an experience as you can. We have other profs like being really creative about how they're going to do demonstrations in the lab. We have other profs thinking about how to mail things to you so that you have stuff and how to design a course that you can do basically in your backyard. So it, I know it sucks. It's not the situation we want, but I want you to know that we are doing the best we can to to do what we can in this situation. So I'm if there's a, I think the last thing maybe I'll say is that if anyone has questions, you can email me as associate dean um, and I can put my email here. If we didn't get to your question or you're maybe you're a bit shy and you didn't want to ask it, then um, you can send me an email and, and I'll try and get the answer for you. Amazing. Well, thank you both so, so much for, for this incredible advice. I think just by the comments that I'm seeing, um, this is really, really beneficial for a lot of our students. And um, again, just wanted to, um, we've, we've popped quite a few links, quite a few resources in the chat. So please feel free to take a look through there, um, use what you'd like and get in touch with us, um, either either Leslie or, or Margie, I'm sure would be more than happy to respond. Um, you can also email communications.science at dal.ca with any of your questions. This recording uh, will be available on the Dal Science Hub, which I've put in the chat. Um, and thank you everyone so much. Happy Friday, have a great weekend. And <laughs> or Saturday if you're in the UAE. <laughs> <laughs> We are really looking forward to September and hope to see you all uh, virtually then. So thank you so much, everyone. Take care, Bye. everyone. Thanks, everyone. See ya.